developing and seriously unfortunate condition, one known as planter warts. These warts grow on people's feet and look like ugly white pieces of corn or like really nasty scabs. They're often caused by an HPV infection. Planter warts can grow so big and become so foul on a person's foot that surgery is needed to remove them from the soles of the feet. If left untreated, these gross white warts growing like fungus on a person's feet can get so bad that amputation is necessary. And try what you may, but these things don't go away easily. Chemicals and acids don't get rid of them. Ointments don't get rid of them, and it's basically impossible to walk once the warts take over your feet. The worst part is you won't even know you have severe plantar warts until it's too late. As a word of advice, be sure to check your feet every now and again and see if you have white chalky stuff growing out of them. Number 9. Melting Skin Epidermolysis bullosa, or EB for short, is an incredibly rare genetic skin condition primarily characterized by very fragile skin. A person born with this unbelievable condition is constantly at risk of basically having their skin melt all the way off. The fragile skin is very easily damaged, which can lead to lots of blisters and wounds. The disease affects the mucous membranes as well, even inside of the respiratory system and the gastrointestinal tract. The disease is, quite frankly, debilitating. It even has a status as an orphan disease. Unfortunately, there is no cure yet for EB and barely any treatments available. The only thing that can be done is to soothe pain caused by the melting flesh. The science behind EB is shocking. EB is caused by poor anchoring of the epidermis to the underlying dermis. In simpler terms, the skin doesn't stick properly to the mucous membrane beneath. Think of wallpaper that doesn't stick to drywall and easily falls off. Only this is with human skin. The root cause of the poor anchoring is a defect in genes. The skin has no integrity. It's estimated that 20 in every 1 million live births will have epidermolysis bullosa. Someone suffering from this disease has a fairly low chance of survival. Number 8. The Werewolf Gene Scientists have recently discovered a genetic mutation that causes people to turn into werewolves. Well, they don't exactly turn into man-eating monsters howling at the full moon, but they do grow exceptionally thick hair like wolf fur all over their faces and bodies. It can happen to both men and women, and the result is quite shocking. The disease itself is known as hypertrichosis, commonly referred to as werewolf syndrome. There have been fewer than 100 cases documented throughout history. What researchers do know about this wildly rare disease is that it runs in the family bloodline. Back in 1995, scientists traced the exact location of the mutation to part of the X chromosome in a Mexican family who had been affected by werewolf syndrome. About 30 people in the family have been diagnosed with hypertrichosis. Just recently, a girl from Thailand with werewolf syndrome earned her place in the Guinness Book of World Records for being the hairiest child in the world. At least there's some consolation to being born a werewolf. According to Live Science, the disease is probably caused by an extra piece of DNA that switches on hair growth and can't turn it off, turning people into real-life fur monsters. This gene is called SOX3. Have you ever heard of werewolf syndrome before? Let me know in the comments below, and while you're at it, give this video a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Number 7. Benjamin Button Disease did you know that the Benjamin Button disease is actually a very real thing, not just a Hollywood movie starring our main man Brad Pitt? It's known properly as progeria disease, or Hutchinson-Guilford progeria syndrome. This rare genetic condition doesn't exactly cause somebody to age backwards, though. What it does do is force a child's body to age much faster than normal. This is caused by a mutation in the LMNA gene. Tragically, children with this disease do not live past the age of 13. It's not even a question of maybe. They simply don't live past 13. Like most diseases, both boys and girls are equally vulnerable to being born with it. The only good news is that it's much rarer than most other diseases. Only about 1 in every 4 million babies will be born with the Benjamin Button disease. It's a mistake in the LMNA gene, which causes it to make an improper protein. 
The cells use the protein and they break down much easier than they normally would. With all these cells breaking down, children begin to age at a shocking rate. Unfortunately, for those born with Benjamin Button disease, there are no symptoms right away. They won't begin showing signs of the disease until later on in their first year of life. They'll start growing an extremely large head, their voice will be high-pitched, veins start bulging out of their body, and sometimes their eyes can get so big that they can't close them all the way. This is not as cute as the movie made it out to be. It's absolutely horrific, and as these children get older, they even develop diseases usually only seen in people older than 50, ultimately dying of heart attack or stroke by the age of, yep, 13. There is an immense need for research into the disease. Finding a cure for progeria will not only help these poor children, but may provide the solution for treating millions of adults with heart disease and strokes associated with naturally getting older. Number 6. Frog Baby A woman from Zimbabwe recently gave birth to a frog monster. As ridiculous as this sounds, it's 100% true. As reported by the Daily Mail, Precious Nyafi from a small village in the northwest of Zimbabwe was eight months pregnant when she unexpectedly went into labor. This woman was 36 years old and otherwise pretty healthy, but rather than giving birth to a normal baby, she pushed out what villagers could only describe as a frog-like monster. The baby unfortunately died in the hospital, which isn't a huge surprise considering it was literally a frog. The village elder then ordered the woman to burn the creature in front of the other residents of the village, probably for reasons of a paranoid and superstitious nature. So far, nobody has offered a medical explanation for the unbelievable birth. Nobody's quite sure how she carried a tiny creature that resembled a frog in her stomach for eight months. And with the remains of the frog mutant baby thing burned, probably to prevent some kind of curse, scientists will never know the answers. Maybe she kissed a frog eight months before looking for her prince? What do you think? Number five, lobster hands. Lobster hands is a strange medical condition, also known as split hand slash foot malformation. This limb abnormality is always present from birth. The physical attributes of lobster hands are exactly what they sound like. A person's hands look like lobster claws. Lobster hands can also be lobster feet. A person is born with fingers or toes missing, making their hands shaped like claws. They will also have some strange webbing between the few toes and fingers they do have. Split hand slash foot malformation varies in severity. The most famous cases of lobster claws involve a person's third finger being replaced by a sort of cleft that tapers towards the wrist, effectively cutting a person's hand or foot into two parts. Nobody has narrowed down the exact cause of lobster hands yet, and unfortunately, there is no cure. People born with this condition are forced to suffer as lobster mutants for the rest of their lives, seeing as they can't grow their missing digits. Number four, mermaid syndrome. Mermaid syndrome, medically known as sirenomalia, is one of the more extreme rare conditions a person can be born with. It's actually a rare congenital development disorder that consists of anomalies of the lower limbs and lower spine. People who are born with mermaid syndrome suffer from a partial or full fusion of their legs, making them look like real-life mermaids. It's estimated that one in every 60,000 to 100,000 births are born with sirenomelia. And while it might be kind of interesting to be born a mermaid, the side effects are significantly more serious. People with mermaid syndrome often experience malformations and abnormalities inside of them, like in their gastrointestinal tracts. Additionally, they could have underdevelopment of both of their kidneys. Infants born with mermaid syndrome can have one or both feet rotated in the wrong direction. According to a report prepared in part by the University of Chicago Pritzker School of Medicine, mermaid syndrome is often fatal in the first year of life. But, lucky for some, they are able to live all the way into adulthood. The only bummer is that mermaid syndrome doesn't help you swim. Number three, fish odor syndrome. Fish odor syndrome is one of the weirdest syndromes that people can be born with. It's a genetic disease with one main symptom, emitting a disgusting fish odor. 
You literally stink like rotten fish. It's an offensive body odor that you can't even cover up with the best deodorant, because the rotting fish smell is due to excretion that comes out of your sweat. You basically sweat fish slime. Not only that, but the excretion comes out of your breath and urine too. This means your toilet is gonna stink and you can't breathe on anyone. The source of all this stench comes from trimethylaminuria, or TMA, and fish odor syndrome itself is a result of a mutation in your FMO3 gene. Most cases of people having trimethylaminuria appear to be inherited in an autosomal recessive pattern, meaning both copies of the gene in each cell have mutations. The parents of an individual with an autosomal recessive condition often each carry one copy of the mutated gene, but usually don't show signs and symptoms. Carriers of an FMO3 mutation, however, may experience mild symptoms of trimethylaminuria or have temporary incidents of fish-like body odor. The only good news with fish odor syndrome is that people often don't have it for life. These symptoms are usually seen in infants and in healthy adult women when they begin menstruation. It's actually pretty easy to fix for older women by using acid lotions and soaps to remove the secretion coming out of their skin or by switching to a better diet. Number two, real life gargoyle. There is a rare inherited connective tissue disorder that can turn a person into a gargoyle. The only bad news is that they don't sprout wings and it's actually quite painful. Gargoyle syndrome, known in reality as fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva, can be characterized by an abnormal development of bone in places inside the human body where bone is not meant to grow. The best examples of this are ligaments, skeletal muscles, and tendons. The onset of this disorder creates bones in places that are supposed to be soft and squishy. This is what turns you into a gargoyle. The skeletal muscles and soft connective tissue inside a person's body literally go through a metamorphosis in which they turn into rigid bone. Their joints lock in place and movement becomes impossible. People who suffer from gargoyle disease are even more prone to suffering from other skeletal malformations. Episodic flare-ups can be common, normally during childhood. There is no cure for turning into a human gargoyle, and it generally only gets worse and worse until a person is 100% immobilized and in constant, agonizing pain. Number 1. Fingers and Toes a baby has been born with 31 fingers and toes. And no, they aren't part of the X-Men. In the village of Xiongping, China, a migrant worker gave birth to a child suffering from a severe case of polydactyly, which causes extra appendages to be born on a person. The child has 15 fingers on each hand. The kicker? He has no thumbs. The child only has fingers. But who needs thumbs with 15 fingers? The kid also has 16 toes. Of course, this kind of thing isn't normal. The poor baby will need to have three corrective surgeries to get rid of the extra toes before he can walk properly. What's really interesting in this case is that the child's mother also has extra digits. She has an extra finger on each of her hands, suggesting the condition is indeed hereditary. According to Dr. Zhu Xiai, the operation will involve cutting off each extra finger and toe, then reshaping the remaining digits to form something relatively normal. There are risks of damaging bones, joints, skin, and critical veins, but hopefully the infant will come out on the other side okay. surf and then proceeded to slither along the sand of the beach. Snakes don't really belong on the beach. They should be in the Everglades or literally anywhere else, with the exception of our houses, of course. It looks as though it had come in on a wave, and the crowd gathered to watch as the poor snake fought the tide to get back onto the shore. Even though the witnesses felt bad for the struggling snake, nobody was really dumb enough to try to help it. After all, this was a diamondback rattlesnake, extremely venomous and potentially lethal. Nobody knows why a rattlesnake ended up on the beach or how exactly it got into the water, but an animal control officer did eventually show up to save the beachgoers from the deadly serpent. According to witnesses, the animal control officer grabbed the snake by the head and simply dropped it into a carrier. The snake didn't even try to fight back. 
You must have been exhausted after all that swimming. Number nine, banana frog. A frog recently made a pretty incredible journey traveling 5,000 miles or 8,046 kilometers from Colombia to South Wales, hiding inside of a bunch of bananas. The exotic frog was discovered by supermarket staff as they were putting away the produce. The frog most likely survived its arduous journey inside of a cooler because it slowed down its metabolism and went into a kind of hibernation. Back in Colombia, the frog had probably been relaxing in the bunch of bananas minding its own business when they were picked by farmers, stuffed into a crate, and then shipped across the world. After the frog's bizarre journey, it was transferred to a specialist animal center to be properly cared for. Staff at the center claimed that the frog was probably a type of banana tree frog, though they did admit it was difficult to identify its species. After all, there are thousands of different frogs in the jungles of Colombia where the bananas were harvested. I guess it's just lucky that the staff at the supermarket found the frog before an unwitting family took the bananas home and ended up with an unexpected pet. Number 8. The Cat in the Wall The last place anyone expects to find a cat is inside a wall. And yet, that's exactly what happened when Molly the Cat got lost during her owner's move out of their house. When they were moving, they couldn't find the cat anywhere. They searched and searched, and they even returned to the empty home and left out food, only to check in later to see that the food had not been eaten. Then the new owners of the house left out food and milk, hoping to lure the lost feline out of hiding. It would be three weeks since the cat had gone missing. Finally, the new owners of the house heard meowing coming from a wall near the kitchen. It turned out that the cat had somehow magically gotten stuck inside of a cavity in the wall. There seemed to be no way of rescuing the Houdini cat. So the new owners called the Derbyshire Fire and Rescue, and they came and tore up the floorboards, allowing them just enough space to lure the cat out of the cavity and save Molly's life. She was terribly skinny after all the time she spent stuck in the wall, but quickly fattened back up with all of her favorite kitty foods. Since the traumatic incident, Molly has been returned to her original guardians and is safe and sound. Number 7. Badger in a Castle An extremely angry badger recently caused a Scottish castle to close down after becoming a menace to the public. The cellar at Craignathan Castle in England had to be closed after the badger apparently became lost and took up shelter in the ancient residence. The badger actually caused quite a bit of a mess and stir as it was trying to dig its way out of the castle and ripping up the ancient stones. Luckily, the badger never attacked any of the guests, but it was still a safer call to just shut the whole place down. Staff had to lure the animal out of the underground cellar using cat food and honey. The castle itself was built in the 16th century. Even after the uninvited visitor vacated the premises and went back into the forest, the underground part of the castle had to remain closed because of the damage done to the stone masonry. The badger had been trying to tunnel its way out of the castle like some kind of medieval prisoner. Why do you think they didn't just call in animal services to get the badger out? Save the ancient floor, right? What would you do? Let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 6. Koala in the Christmas Tree An Australian family got an unexpected Christmas gift when they discovered a furry ornament living inside of their tree. It was a live koala. Merry Christmas! The adorable little animal had somehow gotten tangled in the lights and plastic branches of their Christmas tree, and the family arrived home to see a living, breathing koala just kind of lounging on some garland on the tree in their living room. According to USA Today, the koala probably crawled in through the front door when no one was looking, explored the house for a few hours while the family was gone, then decided to take up residence inside of their Christmas tree. After all, it's not like the koala knows the difference between a real tree and a fake tree. It just saw a tree and decided to climb. Or maybe it liked all the pretty lights. Naturally, the family called their local koala rescue, but the rescue center actually thought it was a prank call at first. It took some convincing, but they did eventually come out and get the koala bear. The sad part behind this otherwise adorable story is that after the brutal wildfires in Australia, koala bears have become virtually extinct, with estimates saying there are less than 43,000 of them still alive and that they are currently trending towards extinction because of habitat loss. 
driving them into people's homes and up into their Christmas trees. Save the koalas. Number five, Pig Beach. In the Bahamas, there's an island called Big Major K. It's small, uninhabited by people, and home to an unusual group of feral pigs. These pigs seem to be concentrated at a place locally known as Pig Beach. Sounds like a blast. International guests who stay at the luxurious Fal K Resort have been feeding these beach pigs for so long that they've become part of the landscape. The pigs are so brave and so used to humans that they will even swim from the beach out into the sea to try to steal food from your boat. In fact, the pigs have been known to jump into people's boats and steal their lunches. As weird as it is to hear, the entire island in the Bahamas is controlled by pigs. They own the island, they do things on their own terms, and in the cooler parts of the day, they populate the entire beach area. Nobody knows exactly how many pigs are on the island or how they even got there. Some claim the pigs survived a shipwreck and because the island was uninhabited and there were no predators, they just kind of flourished. Now that there are so many tourists visiting the local resorts, the pigs have found themselves with an endless supply of food. The only downside of having so many pigs near a Caribbean resort is that there have been some reports that have suggested tourists have killed pigs by giving them fatal doses of alcohol. Number four, giant lizard in a 7-Eleven. In Thailand, 7-Eleven is everywhere. 7-Eleven can be found on every corner in just about every district of the country. And apparently, so too can giant lizard monsters. Shoppers got a bit more than they bargained for when a giant monitor lizard broke into the store and began crawling up the shelves, knocking down bags of chips and other produce onto the floor and causing general mayhem. The lizard was absolutely massive, and yes, there are a lot of them in Thailand. Usually, they tend to live near ponds and canals in humid climates. They can also be found in the sewers of Bangkok and apparently in the 7-Elevens of small towns in rural provinces. According to the report from NBC News, these lizards can reach about 6 feet or 1.8 meters in length, making them the second biggest lizards in the world next to the Komodo dragon. The lizard that invaded the small convenience store seemed to be at peak physical size. It was a beast. The thing managed to get onto a rack of food near the ceiling where it stopped its reign of terror and took a break. Employees of the store phoned the police and they brought the reptile handlers to the scene to chase the giant animal away. Number three, rabbit in the couch. A woman in Melbourne thought that her beloved pet rabbit had gone to the great beyond after it went missing for over three weeks. The rabbit's name was Sharon and she disappeared from the backyard, causing great mental distress for her owners. They thought she had gotten out and escaped and was probably taken and eaten by some kind of large hungry bird. Three weeks after Sharon had gone missing, when the owners were just about ready to stop grieving, she was discovered inside the couch. Sharon was found when her owners had a guest spend the night. The guest pulled out the couch to sleep on it, and there was Sharon, literally stuck inside the couch. She had been there for three weeks and didn't at all seem stressed out about it. The rabbit was a bit skinny, but otherwise perfectly fine. In fact, when she was found, Sharon was happily munching away on the interior of the couch. She had been eating feathers and couch fibers for 22 days. She is now back to the yard and eating more suitable food. Number two, the Tiger of Harlem. A man in Harlem kept a 425 pound, that's 193 kilogram, tiger in his apartment. If this seems like a bad place to keep a tiger, <laughs> that's because it is. The tiger keeper was a man named Antoine Yates, also known as New York City's Tiger Man. It was back in 2001 when Yates brought a tiger cub home with him to his Big Apple apartment, with the young big cat being only eight weeks old. Naturally, the tiger grew and grew, and all the while, Yates just kept it inside of his tiny living quarters where he lived in a Harlem housing project. And this guy wasn't a doctor or a veterinarian. He was a construction worker. He really had no business even having a tiger. No one even discovered what was going on until 2003, at which point they were forced to take action. But when the authorities tried to remove the enormous cat from Yates' apartment, they also discovered a huge alligator being kept there too. 
This guy had a whole menagerie inside of his tiny apartment. Both the animals were transferred to a sanctuary in Ohio, where the tiger died from natural causes in 2019. As for Yates, he spent a bit of time in jail for illegally keeping exotic animals in his apartment. He enjoyed a brief 15 minutes of fame, saying in a report, Consciously, I knew I had a tiger, but the physical interaction and bonding, it was so natural. It was no different than raising a monkey or a snake. Yates claimed his ultimate goal was to build an animal sanctuary that would serve as a new concept of animals living together. Way to dream big. How he never got eaten by one of his pets is simply boggling. Either one of the animals was perfectly capable of devouring him. Number 1. The Cave of Snakes There is a terrifying place in Mexico where snakes literally hang from the ceiling. If the thought of dozens, even hundreds of hungry snakes dangling above your head in the dark terrifies you, you're not the only one. You probably never want to visit what is known as the Cave of Hanging Snakes. It's located near the small village of Cantemo in a remote part of the Yucatan Peninsula. The snakes who reside in the cave have evolved to live high up on the cavern walls and inside the crevices of the ceiling, where they then hang down at night to catch flying bats right out of the air. It's arguably the most horrific place on Earth, and not exactly the kind of location you'd pick for a weekend excursion. In fact, some people have called this the creepiest cave in the world, as there's even a flooded part deep within that houses blind albino crustaceans freaky enough to make you run out of the cave screaming with yellow-red rat snakes snapping at your hair. Into a nightmare of horrors. Visitors to the beach have reported seeing a young woman standing ominously at the side of the road, as if looking for a ride. According to Central Coast News, some have even tried to give this young woman the ride she's looking for, only to realize they're not talking to a woman in the passenger seat. She was never there at all. They had picked up a ghost from the side of the road. The police have apparently received reports of this exact thing happening more than once, and it's not a new phenomenon either. The haunted beach has been terrifying locals for over 40 years. What's truly interesting about the haunted beach is that there's only one ghost responsible for the terror that goes on here. She was apparently beaten by a group of young men in the 1970s and left on the beach to die. Ever since, she's been terrorizing mostly male visitors and has allegedly been responsible for driving some people to madness. Some locals claim the woman's name was Ginny Dixon and the beach was named after her, but this has not been confirmed. And if you don't believe the stories, just head down to Ginny Dixon Beach and wait for nightfall. Maybe she'll find you. Number 9. Attacked by Dogs A family's relaxing trip to the beach turned into a violent incident of teeth and blood after a vicious dog attack. The incident happened in April during the Easter holiday. John and Tammy took their two young children and their puppy to Southport Beach. When they arrived, one of the first things they noticed was that a dog was running around off its leash, and that it looked kind of dangerous, but they didn't really think too much of it. The family unpacked their stuff, they headed out to the sand, and within just minutes of settling down for some sun and relaxation, the same dangerous-looking dog that they saw earlier came out of nowhere and bit Tammy on the wrist. Unprovoked, the aggressive dog tried to rip Tammy's arm off. The dog also attacked their small puppy, tearing it apart like a piece of raw meat. When John tried to intervene and get the dog off his wife, it was so strong that it broke his finger. Everyone survived the attack, but their young puppy was never the same again. He had to be placed on medication and painkillers and has yet to get off the sofa. He's like a traumatized war veteran. The kids were totally fine. Tammy eventually recovered from her injuries, and as for the rabid dog, it apparently got off totally free after its owner secured the ferocious beast and then ran away with it. Number 8. Deadly Shark Attack An American woman snorkeling in the Bahamas had a pretty bad time after being murdered by a shark. She had gone to the Bahamas with her family as part of a beach vacation. But, according to ABC News, she was attacked by a gang of angry sharks and killed. 
Investigators have said that they think there were at least three sharks involved in what seems to be a malicious and possibly even targeted attack. The victim's name was Jordan Lindsay, a 21-year-old girl from California. She was in the Bahamas with her whole family, with the majority of them swimming on the beach while Jordan and her mother were at another part of the island snorkeling. The rest of Jordan's family had no idea that on the other side of the island, Jordan was being ripped to shreds by sharks. But her mother certainly knew, as she was only a few feet away from Jordan when the sharks attacked. Jordan's mother was forced to watch as her daughter had her arms ripped right off by one of the sharks while the other two bit huge chunks of her legs and buttocks and the water turned red with blood. Even though Jordan was transported to the hospital, it was too late. She was already dead. Talk about a bad day at the beach. Number 7. Stabbed at the Jersey Shore At Point Pleasant Beach, New Jersey, someone was stabbed to death after getting into a brawl with a teenager from Newark. The teen has since been charged with two counts of attempted murder. The incident happened in the area of 300 Boardwalk. Police were called in to deal with a violent situation. When they arrived, they discovered that a fight had broken out between two groups of people, both of whom had presumably gone to the beach to relax and be left alone. Well, one of the people involved in the fight was packing a knife. He attacked two people with that knife, stabbing them repeatedly. By the time the police got there, two young males had suffered multiple stab wounds and needed to immediately be transported to the local hospital. Luckily, they survived the ordeal and were last reported as being in stable condition. What makes this incident so much more disturbing is that it happened on a family beach. This is a place where people go with their kids to get a weekend break. But if you're in New Jersey, it's also a place where people go to stab people in broad daylight. Have you ever experienced something crazy on the Jersey Shore? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Number 6. Buried Alive a young man in his 20s was recently arrested after being accused of trying to bury his wife alive at a beach in California. Something straight out of a 1990s Eminem song, this guy allegedly dragged his wife to the ocean and tried to kill her. The woman miraculously managed to escape and run away, at which point she was discovered on the sidewalk by an ordinary citizen. Paramedics quickly arrived at the scene and transported the woman to a trauma center in San Diego. The man who took his wife to the beach to murder her was then found hiding in the backyard of a random home in the area. Let's back this up a bit. A couple visited the beach earlier in the evening, probably as one of those ordinary things that couples do. But then they got into an argument. The husband got angry and started to beat up his wife. In a fit of rage, he dragged her all the way to the water to try to throw her out to sea, but then decided to bury her alive in the sand instead. Of course, he didn't get down on his hands and knees and start digging a shallow grave in the sand. Instead, the guy used a hole that had probably been dug earlier in the day by kids, seeing as this is, after all, a family beach. The violent husband threw his wife into the hole and started shoving sand over her head to fill it up. It was lucky she managed to scramble out of the sand and run for help before she suffocated. Number 5. The Hungry Dingo on Fraser Island, a child was attacked and almost killed after wandering away from his family on Orchid Beach. What exactly attacked the poor toddler, only two years old at the time? It was a hungry dingo. According to the report from The Guardian, paramedics claimed the boy was lucky that he hadn't sustained more serious injuries. He had been savagely mauled by the dingo and only managed to survive because neighbors in the area where the attack took place heard the boy screaming and rushed outside. If it hadn't been for their quick thinking, the kid probably would have been eaten by a dingo. Of course, this is just another thing that you can add to the long list of reasons to never visit an Australian beach. If you don't get eaten by a shark or stung by a jelly, now a dingo will run away with your toddler and try to eat it. The child reportedly suffered wounds to his legs and arms, and he even had a pretty nasty laceration on the back of his head. He had to be flown to the nearest hospital along with his mother, leaving the rest of this horrified family to try and enjoy the remainder of their beach vacation. The dingo? Well, it got away. Number 4. The Angriest Octopus A man in Australia came across yet another horrifying animal while at a local beach. 
but it wasn't a dingo or a shark. Instead, it was a vicious octopus that had murder on its mind. The incident occurred when the man was swimming in Geograph Bay. He found the octopus in shallow water trying to take down a seagull. The octopus literally came out of its home deep in the water to bully birds on land. Lance Carlson managed to capture the angry octopus on video, but unfortunately he got a little too close for the octopus's comfort. The octopus didn't like the look of him, so it scuttled away back to its garden. But shortly after, Lance went swimming and came across the home of the octopus. It was a crab graveyard where the unruly creature had apparently posted up. Angry to see the man again, and at its home no less, the octopus attacked. It lashed out with its many arms and struck Lance on the neck. During the attack, Lance's goggles got fogged and he couldn't see what was happening. All he knew was that he was being brutally attacked by an angry octopus, with pain shooting all across his neck. Thinking quickly, Lance retreated. He managed to get back to shore, at which point he discovered that he was covered in red marks from being beaten by the cephalopod. He treated the stings and sores with vinegar and learned his lesson. Stay out of octopus territory. Number 3. Attacked and Robbed A family from Belleville visiting Nordhook Beach have had a pretty nasty experience. There were three members of the family walking along the beach at a perfectly reasonable time of day taking in the sights and enjoying a bit of relaxation, really just minding their own business. Out of nowhere, criminals attacked and robbed them, even stabbing a 54-year-old woman until she nearly died. The criminals stabbed the woman in the head, making it extremely lucky that she's alive today. Nordhook Beach is in Cape Town, South Africa. It is sometimes a nice place to be, but this has turned into an issue, seeing as it's very popular with tourists from Europe and America. This makes it a prime place for criminals to hang out. Previous to the poor woman being stabbed in the head, a tourist from Egypt was also stabbed at the same beach in January. And in that same month, at least nine people were attacked at a nearby nature reserve by two men who pretended to be hikers. The moral of the story here is that you're not safe on the beach, in the bay, on a hiking trail, or really anywhere ever. Number 2. Kidnapped in Bali a tourist in Bali just trying to enjoy his holiday time on the beach was kidnapped and swindled out of thousands of dollars in what has been reported as a horrifying scam that purposely targets tourists on vacation. But just wait until you see how complicated this bizarre scam really is. It all began with a New Zealander in Bali. He was with his family trying to relax on the beach when he was approached by a man for a friendly chat. The friendly chat turned violent and somehow the man from New Zealand suddenly ended up in a locked car being driven to a remote location. At this remote location, he was forced to partake in a game of cards. Naturally, he lost the card game and was forced to pay a startling sum of money, about $2,000. After taking the horrified tourist to an ATM and forcing him to withdraw as much money as possible, they left him alone. The whole ordeal lasted about four and a half hours. The robbers put the tourist in a taxi and let him go back to his hotel. But instead of any kind of resolution happening after the man contacted the local embassy, they simply told him to go home as soon as possible. The local police didn't care. The man and his wife no longer felt safe, and they called off their beach vacation early, paying an extra $2,000 to change their flights. That was probably the last vacation the couple will ever go on. Number 1. A Body at the Beach Three teenage boys found a bit more than they bargained for when they showed up at the beach to waste away a Sunday afternoon. The teenagers found a shoe. Being the courteous teenagers that they were, they went to dispose of the shoe in the garbage bin. What they discovered in the garbage bin would ruin their entire day. Nestled inside of the trash at the bottom of the garbage can was a pile of human bones. The police were called to the scene at Burunda Beach, Australia. They matched the DNA of the bones found by the teenagers to a missing woman. The missing woman was Melissa Caddick, and she had vanished three months previous from her mansion in Sydney. Nobody had any idea where she went. That was because she had been a pile of bones in a dumpster. This was one of the most high-profile disappearances in Australia in recent years. Melissa Caddick had allegedly conned her friends and family out of over $20 million. 
making her something of a pariah among her own social group. But despite the fact that Melissa had all kinds of enemies, the police couldn't for the life of them figure out what happened to her or if she was even murdered. As of now, absolutely nobody has been held responsible for the woman's bones being found at the beach. Thanks for watching. What was your scariest trip to the beach like? Tell me in the comments and don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more wild videos from the channel. Oh, my God.